Hey everybody, how you doing today? I'm glad you can drop in. I'm getting back to the drawing board here and picking up where I left off in the last part of this series. I've been receiving some comments. Uh, there's a few that are very anxious for me to keep going with this. And I want to assure you that I have no intentions of just dropping this series right in the middle of a drawing. You will be able to see this drawing to completion. I do apologize for the time period in between each video on this particular subject. Unfortunately, there's just so many things on my plate. There's only so much time in a day. I am a one-man show. Just wanted to let you know, hey, I'm, I'm not stopping. I need a break from doing just one thing. I like to do a lot of things. Maybe it's my OCD or something, if I even have that. I don't know. Uh, my wife thinks I have that. But anyway, the whole thing is, is I love art. I love creating. I love experimenting. I love doing different things. And so this is expressed in my channel. This is expressed in my videos. I want to make shirts. You know, I, I want to make paintings. I want to make transfers. I, I just want to create stuff. So there's just so much that, that you're, you could expect to see on this channel. I will always be drawing and I will always be providing drawing tutorials. And also, if you join the Ricks Can Do It Realistic Drawing Group on Facebook, then we have a little more interaction where you can post your drawing with your reference photos side by side. We can discuss it, go over it. It's there for you. Take advantage of it, there's no cost. So anyway, Let's get right into this drawing tutorial that you have been waiting for. Okay, so this is where we left off last time in part six. And today what I'm going to do to start off is I'm going to start adding some little fine white hairs. It's, it's actually not white hair. It's, it's highlighted areas where the light kind of reflects off of a few strands on the dark side of the head here. And that just kind of brings a little realism and a little life to the hair by adding these within the dark area because even in a completely dark zone like you see here in the reference photo you can just spot out some light areas just barely and, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add those in in addition going from the root of some of these hairs I'm gonna start and just start sprouting a few of them from the root and I'm looking at the reference photo and I'm making sure that I am following the same patterns that I'm seeing in the original photo. I, I want to replicate those because I'm, I'm aiming for realism here. And so it's important not to ignore these little details. Now, a happy eraser is a sharp edged eraser. And so what I'm doing here is using my sandpaper block and I'm gonna put a nice sharp edge on my Tombow Mono Zero eraser stick here so that I can get some really fine white lines uh, to put inside the hair here. It's important if, if the lines get a little too thick, you wanna stop and put that edge back on the eraser and go also over the area that has the thick line you know right away or a little later and uh, bring the pencil and thin out those lines you you don't want to leave them if they don't look right Now I'm patiently looking at the reference photo and trying to spot out all the subtle areas that has a highlighted hair. 
even a stray hair, I want to put that in. And I also like to look at the patterns that I see. Maybe I see two hairs flare to the right with one hair intersecting it to the left. Well, I'm going to draw exactly what I see. And drawing these little details, even with your eraser, will make a big difference to your finished product. Now, I'm just going to take my time. It's very relaxing to do this. I, I find that, uh, you know, being able to play some music in the background and, you know, just flicking some of these hairs to the left and some to the right, it's very, very relaxing. And so sometimes when you need to chill, just go into another room and, and start drawing those highlights in the hair. Yeah, that's pretty relaxing. Now you see how I'm carefully studying up close my reference photo. I'm looking for those very subtle hairs that you can hardly see in the photo, but they're there. And if I spot it and I see one here or there, I try to match the depth of tone. Like if it's if it just barely shows, then I'm going to use my eraser and just make it barely show in my drawing. If it has a brighter tip than it does at the root or vice versa, I'm going to try to depict that uh, as I'm drawing it in. I'll go back and lighten up one end of the line other th and leaving the other one a little darker, giving the same exact illusion that uh, I see in the reference photo. Now let me say that it, if you feel you have to be somewhere in 5-10 minutes, if you are like in a hurry, then do something else. Don't do this. This requires you to have time to just do it at your own pace and take it easy as you're doing it. If you're rushed, you're going to miss something or you're going to make a mistake.
Okay, I'm going to switch it up a little bit here now and I'm going to start working on the face and mostly around the eye. I'm really going to be paying a lot of attention for the rest of this video all around the eye area. That will be uh, where the eyebrow is, the upper eyelid, to the side of the eyes, the whole bit. I'm, I'm going to darken that area in and get texture in there. But I won't complete it in this video because it's going to take me some time. But I'm going to be just getting it started. So uh, if there's something I need to point out, I will. But for right now, I I'm just going to get the basic foundation for the eyebrow and start working around the eye, getting it darkened. Because this side of the face has got to become a whole lot darker than it is right now. Now, while it may look like I'm drawing the eyebrow hairs in, really what I'm doing is I'm just filling the area up because it's going to start getting pretty dark around here in a short moment. And I want to make sure that I don't lose the shape. But as far as detail, don't really worry too much about detail at this stage because if it's going to be in a very dark area, you find that you just start darkening the really dark areas and you can start lighting, lightening up the areas that are just a mild shade lighter, like just underneath his eye where uh, his cheekbone is. You can see it's a little lighter, but it's still in a dark area. Well, you're going to be pulling that out with your eraser or blenders. So don't worry too much about hairs and not, oh, got to have this hair here and there because when we get to this dark area here, you're really not going to be able to see them anyway once you start to blend this whole area much darker. But right now, I just want to get the basic shape so I don't lose it. 
And uh, since I won't be able to see any grid lines or anything, um, proportions are going to be so important that I don't lose that. And so these, these become like landmarks for me. They give me an idea of where I am on the drawing once I start blending out the lines and the area starts to get really dark.
Now, when you've done this long enough, you, you start to learn that things will look worse before they'll look better. And this eye is going to be no exception. Right now, this eye looks wonky. It looks like it, it, he's got two different kind of eyes. One's going off in one direction. One's going off in the other. And that's okay. Because right now, I am mimicking the details that I see, but it will start to change appearance as things get darker. Now, we won't see the complete eye in this video because the video will get too long and besides, I stop when I'm tired. But you're going to see enough to start seeing it taking shape and starting to look more and more like the reference photo. So don't let the early stages throw you off. It it always throws me off whenever I see it like, ugh. But because I've done it so many times, I know that it always looks worse before it looks better. So just sit back and, and, and just follow along and just see how this thing evolves before your eyes.
what is really interesting about tones is when you start drawing an area darker, such as around the eye, we, as I start to draw it darker and darker and darker, the eye, including the iris and the white of the eye, becomes lighter and lighter. Now, it doesn't really become lighter because I'm not actually going in there and lighting it, lightening it up. But as the surrounding area gets darker, it makes whatever's in the center there lighter. So I am just getting the details as close as I can. And I'm going to make sure that everything is measured correctly. And I have the correct negative space between the uh, sides of the iris and, and the ends of the eye. But overall, the final tone of this eye will be determined after I've gotten the correct tone around the eye. So whatever it's up against, that is what's going to depict what that tone's going to look like in the end. So you don't have to try to achieve the exact tone in the beginning. It will evolve. It will lighten by itself as everything around it gets darker. So just watch and you'll see for yourself.
Okay, so I'm coming to the very end of this drawing here for today, uh, for part seven of this series. As you see, the eye has come a long ways. The area around the eye is darker, but I have to go even darker still, and I'm going to do that next time. Uh, but for right now, that's going to be it. Okay, well, that's going to have to do it for this episode. Uh, I know that I didn't cover a whole lot of area on the drawing, and this is real time. And because of that, and because, you know, I know a lot of you do not want to see time lapse, I have to kind of pick and choose my spots because some areas, it's like watching grass grow if you're just going to watch me shade for like two hours straight in one little square inch. And that may be a little exaggerating, but it sure feels like that. But in this case here, uh, you know, I'll give you as much real time as possible, but it makes the video very, very long. So I'm going to have to do shorter segments and in, in other words, smaller areas. So we're going to go ahead and conclude here. I still have a lot more work to do on the eye. And once I get that eye exactly the way I want it, then I'm going to start to work my way uh, from the eye outward okay but if I if I don't get the eyes just right the whole drawing gets thrown out so remember that it's details are so important the tones are so important okay well I hope you like this segment if so please give me a thumbs up it certainly encourages me to do the next one the next one so forth subscribe if you haven't done so already and click the notification bell so you be informed of coming videos and again thank you for watching and see you in the next drawing video